made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Hi, Shalom. This is Victoria. I hope you're doing really well. What's coming up, which is June the 4th, is Shavuot, which is a very big celebrated feast of wheat. I want to talk to you a little bit because if you look at this through spiritual eyes, which we need to do if we're born again, is first of all, we think about how that on Mount Sinai, you know, it was like seven weeks after the Israelites left Egypt, the, the great exodus, where they were at Mount Sinai, which as I've told you before, is Mount Horeb, which is over in Saudi Arabia, and uh, they were given the Torah. That's one of the significant things about Shavuot. The other thing that is significant, which is not spiritual, this is reality, would be the fact that this is the counting of the Omar, which Seferet Ha Amur, which this is also very, very important because what is that? The grains. I mean, that is your the staff of life as far as the physical realm goes because that is what makes our bread so important because why too? For our communion with Father, you know, supping with Father. Well, bread, living bread. So grain harvest you've got, which is the counting of the Omar, and then you've got the giving of Torah, but then there's a significant thing that happened that as far as all of us that uh, are born again, and that would be the celebration of Pentecost. And this is where the Holy Spirit comes into each one of us. And as we look at Acts chapter 2, what do we see? We see flames of fire above the heads of the people. I mean, this is where, think about this. Just envision yourself as though you're already there, right? Spiritually, you're already there. And you're in that upper room, and you're up there with the apostles and you're with Mary's there because it's men and women and this is what I love about God you know I mean there there is an equality there because okay look take a look at Galatians 28 3 what does it say all are one men women you know bondsmen uh, uh, servants whoever they are it comes out under the heading of one body for Christ because of what the Lord Yeshua has done on the cross. Came what? All of us equally. Equally. The body of Christ. That's what's so beautiful. It's a big event in the fact that uh, if we think about the days of when the temple was active in Jerusalem, Jerusalem, what do we see? We see it's a holy convocation. Now, where we learn about that is Leviticus 23. Now, if you take a look at Leviticus 2, what do we see? It clearly says that God, Abba Father, says, These are my feasts. Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. What does he say? These are my feasts. All right, And we're going to celebrate them when the millennial reign comes. And I feel we're getting very close, you know, as I've told you many times, I think not too far off from tribulation. Okay, so after the seven years of tri tribulation, what do we see? We see the coming of Yeshua HaMashiach, and that's in uh, chapter 19 of Revelation. And he comes with his saints, and he fights the demonic armies of Satan, and he wins. We win. It's a celebration. And what? Then the millennial reign. And the temple. The beautiful temple of Yeshua. Okay. Which is high in the mountains. Where do we learn that? Take a look at Zechariah. Temple of Almighty. The Almighty. That will reign in the millennial reign. And all the nations will be under his rule. What is he called? He's the mighty counselor. Alright. And so this, this is what we're looking forward to. And we're just... You know, it seems like we're getting so close to that. And if you think about in the physical realm, seven years, that is not that far off. I mean, how exciting is that? Okay, so getting back to Shavuot, it's a holy convocation in the temple. That means everyone would go to the temple in Jerusalem. Jerusalem, as it said in Hebrew. Hallelujah. And so it's a holiday. It's a big event. I would say it is a good idea to read the book of Ruth. I don't see why not. Thoughts on that is it's incredibly important to learn and study the Old Testament as well as the New Covenant, even though 
the Old Testament has been abolished. Where do we read that? In the New Testament, the New Covenant. All right. However, it still stands in the way that we learned since Abba does not change. He's the Alpha and the Omega. So therefore, it is good, I believe, to study all of it and to learn, you know, read through the Torah, understand the Torah. Why? Because you find out what is pleasing to God. What are the ways of him? And, and I think that's important. And after all, if we look at Paul, now think about this, all right? Let's, let's focus right now on Paul for a minute. All right, here's Paul who trained under Gam, Gamiel. I don't know if I'm saying it right, Gamiel. All right, and he was a renowned Judaic scholar, all right? And Paul, he, he was a Pharisee. I mean, he knew all there was to know about the laws. What do, what do we see? What am I getting at? When we read through Acts, what do we find? Paul felt it was still important to go to Jerusalem. Even when he was out on the ship going to different lands, he still trekked back when he could to Jerusalem to participate in the feast. And if you look at Colossians, I believe it's in chapter 3, it's a shadow of things to come, my friends. Zechariah also, if you take a look at that, in chapter 14, verse 16, it tells us clearly that in the millennial reign, we will do the feast. Hallelujah. We learn also as we read the book of Acts is that as he goes to the, you know, on his journey, you know, I think about it, he takes ships and he goes all over wherever he can go preaching the good news of the gospel and telling about the resurrection and the power. Paul had great power. You know, all of these wonderful God-given abilities, abilities. And what do we have? We have that same incredible power. And how do we uh, get that? Well, when you're born again, think about this. If you take a look at Acts at the very opening part of Acts in chapter 1, Yeshua says to the disciples to tarry in Jerusalem because you're going to gain power from on high. Power that lives right within us. The Spirit of God comes inside of us. And then we are baptized. Many of us get baptized in the Holy Spirit of God Almighty. And there's power. Power, my friends. Supernatural. There's no way to explain it but that. It is supernatural, God-given power. Don't you want that? And to walk in it and to know Abba like you've never known him before because he lives inside you. He comes inside you. It's just amazing. So to me, Pentecost is incredible. So look what you have. You look at two events there coming at the same time. The Torah event of Sinai, and then you're looking at the fire of God coming inside of you at Pentecost. What an amazing event. No wonder it's one of the three main feast festivals of the seven feasts of God. A very important one, my friends. And if you look at it also spiritually, think about this. The... Uh, you know the grain. Getting back to the grain, the the way that uh, the the grain harvest. They even make wreaths. Did you know that? Even make wreaths out of the wheat, and and the little girls wear them and tuck flowers in them. Their little uh, garlands that they put on their heads. I mean, it's so beautiful. And uh, the celebration of God. I mean, think about it. Little seedlings growing in the fields, and then developing into wheat that makes incredible bread. And what does the Bible say? God, Abba, Yeshua, Mashiach, is living bread, my friends. Living bread. And we take, we partake in that bread. I mean, it's just all so incredibly orchestrated by God, Abba, Father, for each one of us to just get such revelations from Him. Don't you want that? Did you know that He wants to give you freely knowledge all you have to do is pray. Ask him. Ask him for knowledge. He freely gives it. His in this where do we learn this from James? It's in the book of James. James spoke, and who's James? The half brother of Jesus, Yeshua. And what does he say? He says that 
he wants Yeshua wants to give us knowledge okay so to me you know this when we think of all of this it's just the beauty of all of it coming together is just to me it's just a supernatural thing my friends a joyous time a joyous time to think of coming okay let's go even a step further let's go a step further okay what what happens we see in, is the trek of the Israelites let's get back to Egypt going to Sinai so they go from Egypt they walk Moses leads the way and they get over to Sinai Mount Horeb and so it's a you know big big journey right but what are they leaving they're leaving the pagan god cities of Egypt that Pharaoh is con in control of all right and they're going to where they're going to the new land Israel well Wayne they become one new man where do you see that Ephesians 2 therefore they all of us all Jews Gentiles they become one new man and what are they they are the inheritance for God Abba Yeshua okay so it's a very beautiful thing and so when we look at leaving Egypt and the pagan uh, religions of Egypt it's the same idea spiritually with with those that are the Gentiles that leave the spiritual pagan religions face whatever belief systems idolatries all of that and walk with Yahweh Yeshua walking with him being one new man that's the beauty of all of it my friends one more thing I, I I talked to you a little bit about it but I do want to talk about this in case someone is new listening to this on Sinai did you know they opened up Saudi Arabia's area there where Sinai Mount Horeb is did you know that it's called Jabal El Laws and it for years it was all they had military around it nobody could if anybody went through they would be executed or arrested and do you know they opened that up and uh, people can go and view it for themselves and there are etchings they have found the altar they believe of Moses there it's all there there's the etching of the uh, cow which they they think that has to do with the uh, you know when they made the golden calf there's an etching there there's a lot of evidence there you know there's just there there's evidence too of water I mean think about a dry desert and, and there was water right there there's evidence of that coming out from in the in the basin area of that big big rock that massive rock that's still there as the evident did you know this is the other thing that I find very very exciting if you Google map it you can take a look at that Mount Horeb that area there okay and it's all blackened it's all charred and that's also to me very exciting because if you read in Exodus take a look at Exodus and what do you see there the first meeting where the Israelites were allowed to come onto the mountain where God would meet them on that mountaintop the trumpet of God blew they heard it and they they were terrified I mean it was a massive trumpet blow okay and the area how did he appear to them in that area he appeared in fire and in our scriptures it says God is an all-consuming fire fire is from God he's the creator of fire he's the creator of all things but there was massive fire on that mountaintop and they it's all charred still today in nowhere around in the whole region do you see that no 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 that's evidence that's evidence of how great of a thing that was how great of an event that was that the Israelites witnessed and that is where the laws were given to Moses what are those laws well all together like I say in Torah the first five books of um, the Old Testament all right which Moses wrote those are the laws that the Israelites lived by that were you know that Moses was instructed by God that that's how the people should live and it was God Almighty Yeshua HaMashiach that actually wrote on the tablets the stone tablets the Ten Commandments go to Exodus 20 read 19 too. read Exodus 19 then go to Exodus 20 Exodus 20 gives you the laws 
the actual written in stone laws to live by. All right. Now, in the New Testament, if you read through the whole New Testament, though, it does. Jesus did speak of of a lot of the same thing. All right. But he did say that the key ones were Shema. You know, to love Him with all our hearts, mind, soul, everything, our being. All right. And that you can read in Mark 12. All right about the Shema. And then also he said. Another a critical commandment was to love thy neighbor as thyself. That, those are two key factors that are given in the New Covenant, the New Testament, the New Wine. So, you know, that's something to think about, too, that we, we need to love one another. But it's not a fake love. It's, it's a true love, just like the Messiah had. There's a difference. You know, not a fake love. No, no, no. Learn who he is. Learn who he is. And how do we do that? Get in his word. Gotta stay in this word, my friend. Okay, I want to say Haksamag to you. May you have an absolutely wonderful Feast of Weeks and celebrate the Pentecost of fire and the rejoicing of the giving of his word. Hallelujah for who he is. Praise him forever. Thanks again for coming and watching. And God willing, I'll be back again small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Small, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Now the Bible I had said on the right hand or on the forehead, I looked at that and I said, praise God, I didn't do it. I wasn't a part of it. Oh, isn't that good? And the Lord said, look at the word Mark. And I said, but Lord, he said, look it up in the Greek. And I've got the pages from the Strong's Concordance here so that you can look it up yourself. The word Mark is Chiragma in the Greek. And it's 5480 in the, in the Strong's Concordance in the, in the Greek. And it says a scratch, an etching, a stamp, as a badge of servitude, or cut into... It takes you to the word charax, which is to sharpen to a point the idea of scratching a stake, a pointed object, pointed into. I believe what John saw as Jesus was giving him the book of Revelation, I believe what he saw was a hypodermic needle, and I'm going to tell you why. Because in the meetings that I have been in, Meetings in Luxembourg, meetings in London, meetings at the Sir Francis Drake Hotel in San Francisco with a lot of these people. I've been in 17 of these One World type meetings. The, the whole idea behind it is identification. They ruled me and they used lithium. One of the doctors at my Boston Medical Center about the concentration of lithium used in the microchip. I said, what happens if that breaks down? If the chip breaks down, if there's a blow struck and it breaks down, he said, and this guy was an atheist, he said it'll cause a sore, a, you know, a grievous sore. And I went and I looked at Revelation 16, verse 2. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped the image. I want to point out something to you folks. That sore is singular. It's sore. They didn't break out with sores. They broke out with a sore. The straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him, and he with me.